All right. This is Fedora 42. And I am just so impressed with the simplicity and how well it's worked on an old laptop that I have here. So I am now remoted into the laptop because out of the box it worked for remoting into it, which is really cool. I didn't have to install VNC. Uh, I just, it, I RDP'd into it from my Windows machine and it works perfectly. So let's start off uh, talking about how easy that was like, and how I did it. So I just pretty much, let's see, I went to the system settings, the settings gear here. And then I went to uh, system and then right here, remote desktop. And I just made sure it was on the remote control desktop sharing here. And then I just set up a password. The default one is a really long password. I just changed it to something easy because I'm just messing around with this uh, computer right now. The default port for RDP right there is 3389. I didn't have to put any of that in. The host name is right there. I basically just opened up an RDP or a remote desktop box in Windows, typed in that host name, click connect, put in my username and password that matches this right here. And it connected. And it's super fast, super efficient, and there's no skipping, I, I, just no problems. I mean, maybe everybody else's mileage may vary, um, but it worked right out of the box really easily, and I'm super impressed by this. Now, everything else on Fedora just seems really snappy. It updates quickly. Um, I installed Obsidian, which is, it's not open source, but it's my one or, you know, a few apps that gets a pass where I, I don't care. It's just runs so well and it works with basic text files, markdown files. So that just shows that it's future proof. If something does go, you know, you know, bad with the app and it just, I can't use it anymore. I could just take my text files elsewhere. So here's obsidian. You can see that I can launch that and let's see, it launches really quickly. This is again, this is an old laptop. And I got all my stuff here and uh, let's close that. Let's go back and see what other apps, what else tonight? I installed Brave Browser. Um, I just prefer it, it's really fast and uh, it comes with Firefox, but I uninstalled that. And we got, I installed Extension Manager and Gnome Tweaks so I could have, you know, the minimize and maximize buttons on my windows. I installed uh, GIMP 3.0, GIMP 3. I installed Pika Backup. I've been using that a little bit, just started using that lately. It seems really simple and I like it. There's the terminal. Everything else that comes with it is just what you'd expect. You know, there's things that I, that I, um, and here's, here's actually a, a guide on what I did for Obsidian. That's what I was working on last in my notepad. But once, one thing I did notice about notepad or the, uh, text, what's it called? Gnome text. I don't know. A text editor is it does use up a bit more resources but nothing to be concerned about, but like compared to something like Windows Notepad, which I don't know, for some reason that just bugs me <laughs> that Microsoft has stuff that uses less memory. I mean, maybe that, but there's, but there's other gains obviously in Linux. It's, it's leaner in a lot of other areas. But for instance, if I was to take a bunch of text, duplicate it, duplicate it more, it starts to get a little chunky pretty quick if you know what i mean so then if i go and run something like you know system monitor uh right here and show you what um what is it called text editor is taking up or whatever um where's that where are you at there it is gnome text editor you can see right there let's go by memory there we go. It's using up 53 megabytes. Now, like in Windows, Notepad comparably would be using up maybe like one megabyte. So that's just something that kind of, it's, just, it's more of a, a minor complaint. I'm sure there's another text editor I could use that doesn't use up as much data. And to be fair, this has tabs built in. Like Windows 10 Notepad stops at like, well, the 2021 version of Windows 10 LTSC um, stops at the older Notepad. So it doesn't have the features like, that something like this would have. This has dark mode. It has more stuff. So to be fair, that's okay. You know, but then again, we're using 53 megabytes in a small text file still. So that's just something that I would like to see improved, hopefully, but I can't complain because again, there's, there's gains in other areas. 
like if I go back here to resources, you're going to see I'm using up 2.3 gigs of memory. On my Windows desktop, I'm using up much more than that just standing still. I am. So, and, and 2.3 is because I have this open. Let's close this. Discard. Let's see that go down a little bit. How much? 2.2. There we go. Okay. Whoa. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right. Okay. So uh, this runs fast, uh, you know, on top of the, and this is an old computer. Again, this is running fast. So that's, that's one of the things I love about Linux and um, not being spied on like I am in windows 11 um, and you know, all the tel telemetry data that Microsoft collects. So hope this video may have helped someone. I just really like the latest version of Fedora. I think it's great. Thanks for watching.